Today, I will be creating a Desert Boneyard outpost using Blender and Photoshop. I will reveal my secrets at each critical step, from concepts to photogrammetry, close simulation, creating custom tile textures, lighting, and post-processing. I hope you enjoy the art creation process, and let's jump right into it. I'm starting off by sketching my concept in Photoshop. I'm mainly trying to build a foundation, outlining the main shapes and composition. In the center of the frame, there will be this gigantic elephant skull, framed by its two tusks. I'm slowly adding basic colors to my sketch. I'm thinking of adding some tents in the shadows, protected from the scorching sun. And I'm adding a few characters to remind myself where I'd like them to appear in the final render. To prepare my scene in Blender, I start by adding a ground plane and creating a camera. I add in primitive shapes to block out the canyon and try to roughly match the composition of my concept. Everything will be built around the giant skull, so I will start with that. I start off with proportional editing to give the base mesh its general shape, with the help of photo reference. After a quick remesh, using the multi-rest modifier, I'm progressively adding more detail. I'm not going further into subdividing the mesh until I have exhausted the current level of detail. My main focus always remains how it looks from the front. To create the tusks, I lay out a basic curve, give it a nice rounded shape, thicken it with the bevel option, and control the width of each vertex with its respective mean weight. Now let me mirror the tusk and reposition everything so that, again, it looks interesting from the camera view. I very quickly finish off my block out by adding placeholders for the characters and tents. Now let me show you how I create photorealistic cliffs using photogrammetry. I start off by finding some cool copyright-free drone shots of cliffs online. Remember, they need to be well lit, ideally without too many shadows, there must be enough movement throughout the shot to reconstruct the shape correctly after, and you should avoid shots with moving parts like humans or cars, or parts that change too much depending on the orientation of the camera, like the sky or water. A static shot like this one is likely not to work. Using After Effects, I stretch the video to keep only a few dozen frames. After a quick color correction, I export them into a JPEG sequence. Using the free photogrammetry software Meshroom, I import my image sequence, save my project, and hit start with all default settings. With a dozen of 4K images, the whole process takes me between 5 and 10 minutes. At this point, you might end up with a mesh that requires some cleaning. To do that, we import it into Blender, remove vertices not connected to the main mesh, and selectively remove what we don't want to keep, like the sky, and save it back as an OBJ. Back in Meshroom, copy and paste the location of your cleaned up mesh into a new texturing node. Rerun the texturing part and voila, you've got a photorealistic cliff you can use in your render. I'm showing you guys the process super fast because this is not the focus of the video. However, if you are interested in a full in-depth tutorial on this part alone, please let me know in the comments. I'm placing these cliffs elements to form the canyon and keep on tweaking them so that they fit nicely in our scene. To create the sand, I use the ocean modifier and play with the scale and sharpness until I get something that resembles sand dunes. I then reposition the sand plane so that it fits nicely within the perspective of our camera. Now let's start adding the tents. Right off, I'm placing some cylinders as the tent poles to help me visualize where the tents will start and end. I'm giving them interesting angles, always keeping an eye on my camera view. Now the exciting part. I'll show you how to simulate the tent draping for maximum realism. So I roughly align a plane with the poles I placed previously. After subdividing it enough, I add each corner that will be attached to a pole into a vertex group and attach hooks to them. Now in the physics tab, I activate cloth, choose the silk preset, increase the simulation time just so that we're not rushing, and choose my vertex group as a pin group. Now all you've gotta do is press spacebar to launch the simulation and move your hooks to stretch the fabric. I'm moving each hook based off how the wrinkles look from the camera view, because this is what matters in the end. I'm satisfied with the result, so I'm going to pause the simulation, apply every modifier from top to bottom, and I can get rid of my hooks. After repositioning my poles, I can add some final detail in sculpt mode using the clothes brush. And it's that simple! Let me quickly do the same for the rest of the tents, but the scene still feels a bit empty. So I'm quickly adding some props. Using another close simulation with collisions, I'm adding some rocks to the ground, some vases and pots which I roughly model from cylinders and which I scatter around using a particle system, some chests, bags, and a few spears here and there. Okay, time to bring in some life. Using Make Human, a free software, I make a very rough character base mesh. It doesn't need to be perfect since my characters will be almost entirely covered in clothes. After giving them a standard T-pose, I can immediately import them back into Blender using the official add-on. I make a few more variations because I want some kids to be sitting on the skull in the background. Before importing them into Marvel's Designer, 
I need to prepare the characters. I make sure that they remain in T-pose in the first frame and then keyframe them into their final position at frame 30. And when they are ready, I can export them into Marvel's Designer. The most difficult part here is to create the shesh. So I'm relying on a little guide I found online. I'm gonna be honest guys, this is laborious, but the result looks okay. Now I'm making a very rough outfit, simulated with the animation, and adapt it to each of my characters. Back in Blender, I'm using the Solidify modifier to give the outfit some thickness, and all I need to do now is to place my characters in my scene. Time for some color, and I'll start with the sand. I'm plugging a noise texture into a bump node to have something to play with, and then I mix it with a wave texture to generate the sand ripples. Using another noise texture, I can then control the variation of color of the sand itself, thanks to a color ramp set with random sand colors. For the skull, the backbone of my shader is three consecutive noise textures set at different scales and mixed into each other. I then plug that into a color ramp and play with the values until I'm satisfied. But there's one thing that doesn't look right at all. The different clips I have imported come from different videos and they all have different lighting settings. So I'm tweaking each of them with curves so that they blend together better. This one, for instance, looks a bit too red or pink and it's too dark. It doesn't need to be perfect either since we will finish blending them together in the end with Photoshop. But let's create some tile textures from scratch. First, I find a copyright-free image on Google that I could use. This photo of a dead tree should be perfect. In Photoshop, I cut out the part I want and fill the blanks using content over fill. To make this texture tiled, all I need to do is use the offset effect, set the values to half of my image size, and use the stem tool to blend both sides together. Repeat the same operation with the other axis, and now your texture will tile seamlessly. I quickly create a roughness map by adding a black and white layer, make it mostly white with the curves adjustments, and generate the normal map with the normal map effect. And now my wood texture works perfectly in my scene. For the tents, I'm using a free fabric texture from textures.com, which I tweak a bit with a hue and saturation node. Using the same process, I create some clothing materials and give them more personality by blending them with some rug photos I found online. By making variations of the same shader, I can change the colors and look to give each character more individuality. But Let's not forget our little friends over here. I'm just going to camera project some vase textures for these guys and rotate them accordingly so that the texture projection works from the camera view. Now let's bring in some light. Right off, I'm importing a nice sunny HDRI to get the ball rolling. Then I play around with the sunlight until I find an interesting shadow angle. At this point, I'm thinking of adding some displacement to the sand so that it looks better with the light. I play around with the values until the result looks convincing enough and then I set up the distances of my mist pass, which we will be using later on in post processing to fake the atmosphere. Finally, I'm creating a bunch of file output nodes in the compositor window so that Blender automatically saves the different passes I'm interested in in the respective folders. I'll be rendering the beauty pass, which is basically the final image, as well as a mist pass, a shadow pass, an ambient occlusion pass, and most importantly, an ID mask for each of my object groups for easy masking afterwards in Photoshop. I'm always exporting multiple variations of my lighting, usually with an overly saturated edge DRI to get strong colors in the end. I'm going to export some variations a bit more red, more pink, and so on. Notice that I'm also making variations with higher contrasts, stronger lights and shadows for the regions of the image that I want to emphasize. This will give me a lot of flexibility afterwards when we assemble everything together. Now, for the rendering themselves, I like to render in large resolutions but with very low samples. I find that there really is a charm in the denoising artifacts with low samples. It makes the render looks almost painterly. Then, if a specific part lacks detail, I can always render this region alone with more samples. This allows me to keep my render times pretty low despite that I'm using a pretty average laptop. Now, it's time to move on to the final stage in Photoshop. I will start off by blending the different beauty passes together, using mask to selectively add one or remove another. I play around with them and I rely on what I'm seeing. I don't go by any hard rules for this kind of stuff. To add the ambient occlusion pass, I start by removing the black background using the blend if options to make the darkest part transparent. Then using a curves adjustment, I try to maximize the color range from black to white. I can then add it with the rest of the image by setting its blend mode to multiply. Same thing with the shadow pass. Again, I'm using my masks to work on specific parts of the image. I try to accentuate the volumes and creases with the shadows, but keeping it simple, because a specific pass can quickly look pretty bad. Adding my shadow variations, I can start being 
something more creative and sculpt the darker areas of the skull. Now I'm going to add some detail where I need them, but first we need to understand how the overlay blend mode works. Pixels that are at 50% grey will be unaffected, while those darker will become darker and those lighter will become lighter. That means that you can add some small scale detail without affecting your whole image too much if your additional layer is very close to 50% grey. And there's an effect that does exactly that, it's called the high pass filter. Here's an example. So I have this pass I have rendered with more samples, meaning that it has more detail in the fabric for instance. I'm going to turn it into black and white and use the high pass effect on it to crush all the values closer to 50% grey. This way, I can change the layer's blend mode to overlay and it will only affect our base image at the details level. I can then paint my mask to choose where to add these details, giving more sharpness to certain spots, but not too much because we still want to keep the pencil-y feel. The mist pass is a bit easier to blend. I'm creating a layer filled with a sandy color I have picked near the background and I use the mist pass as a mask on it. For the sky, I will just import some images I like and blend them together thanks to the blend if mode. I'm going for an overall blue and clear sky but with some faint clouds forming some denser and heavier atmosphere towards the ground. At that point, I think it's missing some sand in the air. So I'll pick a color close to where I want to add it, fill a new layer with that color, roughly place my cloud overlay where I want it and then copy and paste it as a mask for my color layer. I can then further tweak the mask to make the smoke sit correctly in the scene and you can add more color variations inside your color layer to give more detail. I'll add one more to the right, maybe one in the back right there and a large one towards the front. But let's make it more subtle in front of the main elements so that we can still read the scene. And let's not forget to key out our main character. I'll quickly add some more flying dust on the left side. Note how each dust element has its own color to ensure that it blends perfectly with its surroundings. Now at this point, our scene lacks a bit of detail on the larger elements. To add sharpness to the skull. I'll start by roughly placing one copy of this texture above it. Now I just duplicate it all over the skull and use our overlay technique to subtly blend it with the render. Let me quickly do this again with more textures. I'll add some cracks as well as some grunge to make the overall skull surface more random. Maybe some grunge on these outfits to make them feel more dirty. Now I'm going back to the kids on the top. I want them to be eliminated from behind but casting some shadows. So I'm sculpting the mask around until I get this result. And now it's about time to merge all of our layers and apply a quick camera raw effect because all of our previous edits have made the image a bit dark and desaturated. I'm not going for any specific grading here, I just want to make a nice basis to work on color correction. Now using curves and with the help of my masks, I adjust the brightness of specific parts. I paint in some shadows as well as some highlights by hand. Always keep in mind the direction of your light sources when doing this. Now this guy here, obviously this technique avoids creating complex light setups in Blender to get nice rim lights. Now again with the skull and I like to think of the shape in 3D and how the creases and bumps will block the light to carve the shadows. I'm adding a quick vignette with a very soft brush and I make a final adjustment on this cliff to make it blend better with the rest of the canyon. Now let's open a copy of our merged image in Camera Raw. I'm maximizing the dynamic range by increasing the white point without clipping and get more creative with colors. I then make copies of this layer and give them different edits just like we did with the lights in Blender. This version will have desaturated blues for the sky and this one the opposites for the tents. Now this image is missing just two things, brighter shadows and some clarity to make everything pop. And we are done with the artwork. Let's take a moment to appreciate what we have created. I hope that you have enjoyed this creative moment we spent all together. If you learned something along the way, or maybe that it sparked your imagination, feel free to share what you have taken from this video in the comments, especially if there are specific environments or scenes you would like me to work on. I'm very open to suggestions. I'm considering diversifying the content I upload on YouTube, and I already have some pretty exciting ideas, so to make sure you don't miss any of it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. By the way, you can find this artwork and all of my other stuff on my Instagram page. Until next time, my friends. Stay safe, keep creating, peace.